Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you that how you can create a custom alert in Swift UI. Now, the first thing you might be wondering is, well, why are we creating a custom alert? Because there is already a way that we can create alert in Swift UI. Well, the problem with this alert box or the alert view is that it does not support text fields. So if I even go ahead and create this alert, it is going to allow me to return the alert view. So let's go ahead and do that. And I will say is, it doesn't really matter what I say over here. Let's just say true for now or binding or whatever. We can just say constant binding true. And for the content, we are going to return an alert view. So alert, and you will notice that the alert only allows you to use the text view or the text control. So there is no other way to present a text field. Maybe it will be added later on, but what if we want right now in our app? How would we do it? Well, the good news is that using Swift UI, you can create your custom alert views very, very easily. So let's go ahead and see that how we can accomplish that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new view. There we go, new file. And I'm gonna select Swift UI view. And next, I'm gonna call my alert AZ alert, but you can call anything you want. You can even call it alert with a text field. That's perfectly fine. There we go. It's a, just a basic view, doesn't really have much going on. Now what we want to do is this alert will be presented from the content view, so this view. So we need a way to show and hide the alert. So this means that we will be passing some stuff to it and one of the stuff will be, or one of the things will be is shown, which will be a Boolean property. Now some of you can use is presented, which is an environment variable, that's perfectly fine. I'm just gonna use my own, which is is shown and I need to implement this in the previews also. So I'm gonna just simply pass in the true value, which is by default, there we go. The next thing that we want to pass in is the title, and this will appear somewhere in the alert. Uh, it's not going to be a bindable expression. I mean, you're just gonna pass in the title and just display it. So let's go ahead and pass in the title. So title will be string, and we're just gonna assign it empty string. Now the next part is the actual text that you will write in the text box. And that is, we definitely want to have access to that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and again, I'm going to use binding and I will say text and we will pass in a string. I do need to update my AZ alert previews to accommodate the new text property. And for right now, I'm just gonna pass in a constant with string which can be anything you want, uh, which can be empty for now. All right. Right now we haven't really worked anything on our AZ alert view. So it displays just like a hello world. We can go ahead and fix that. So let me go ahead and add some stuff over here. I'm gonna go ahead and begin with the vertical stack, which is a V stack. Inside the V stack, I can use a text control and display the title. Right now, we are not setting any title, so it's not really going to display anything. But if you want, you can go ahead and set some sort of a title. Let's say add item or something. And not over here in the title. I'm actually setting the text. So let's say add item. There we go. So we should be able to see add item. There we go. The next up is the actual text field. So let's go ahead and add a text field, text field over here. The text field doesn't really have any sort of a title. So I'm just gonna leave this thing blank. There we go. And for the text, that's gonna go into our bindable property, which is also called text. We can go ahead and style our text field by giving it some sort of a text field style. And I'm going to go ahead and use the rounded border text field style, and I will be able to see the text field. I also do want to add some padding and stuff to our VStack. And what I'm gonna do is copy a bunch of code, but that is just related to the style and all the stuff. So I'm just gonna copy part of the code. Let me go ahead and do that. 
part of the code right here with the vstack. There we go. Let's go ahead and a little bit format it correctly. You can see that screen size is not really defined, so I can go ahead and get the screen size, which is we're going to get from the UI screen dot main dot bounds. So there we go. We can get the screen size also. Hopefully it will be able to build and create some sort of a display that we can see. There we go. It looks really nice, right? Great. We don't really have any buttons. We do need two buttons by default, a cancel button and a done button. F stack. So I'm just going to go ahead and add an X stack. And I'm going to go ahead and create a button over here. And I will call it done. And I will also create another button. You can style the button your way if that is, I mean, if you want to style it differently, you can definitely do that. There we go. So we have the edge stack and it contains two buttons, which is done and cancel. Great. What's next? Well, we can add a little bit more uh, styling to it, meaning a little bit more shadow or something. If you want, you can definitely do that. Uh, I'm just going to add a little bit of shadow so that it looks like the alert is kind of like floating a little bit. There we go. Light shadow. Okay. So now the question is, how do we display this alert in our view? So let's go back to our content view. You can see that in the content view, we don't really have much going on. Uh, so I can, what I can do is I can go ahead and use a V stack and inside the V stack, I can show a button and I can say show alert. That will be the only thing right now in our content view. Since I want my alert to show kind of like in the middle of the screen, uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap the V stack. So I'm just going to wrap this with a Z stack. So I'm just going to also change this to Z stack. All right. And inside the Z stack, not the V stack, but inside the Z stack, uh, I'm going to go ahead and create our alert. So A Z alert. And you can see that I don't have a bindable property or text that I can send to uh, the A Z alert. So I need to create both of those things. So I'm going to go at the top and create two state variables. There we go. I get rid of some state variables is presented and text. Once again, you can also use the environment object uh, or the environment key value path, which already has the is presented. You can use that. I'm just creating my own, but if you want to go that route, you can definitely do that. Now I can go ahead and call az alert and passing in the is shown, which in this case will be is presented and the text itself. So you can see the text, we haven't really passed anything over here. Uh, so let's go ahead and pass that. So I'm going to go ahead and say text. The other thing that you will notice is that we are not really passing the title. Uh, the reason that we're not passing the title, we set the title over here to add item. So if we remove that and kind of like just say it is blank, and move it a little bit up so we can pass this as a first argument. So now I can go ahead and to the content view and I can say maybe title over here and the title can be anything you want. I'm just going to say add item. It's not really adding any item. We know that, but we're just going to call this add item. Okay, so let's go ahead and resume. So the first thing you will note over here is that the is presented right now the content view uh, everything is kind of like showing so the first question would be well why is it showing and how can we hide it and the reason it is showing is that inside the az alert we didn't really do anything with the is shown property i mean we created the property but you can see that it's not really being used anywhere so what we are going to do is we are going to change the offset of uh, the alert to make it off screen. So I'm just going to go ahead and say offset for the Y. And if it is, is shown, 
then we are going to go ahead and set the offset to zero, or otherwise we are going to go ahead and set the offset to the screen size dot height. So making it uh, disappear or making it somewhere that you can't really see on the screen. And we can also go ahead and say animation spring. So when it does come back, it comes back with an animation. Let's go ahead and build it. Now we can go back to our content view and try to resume this. So now you can see that since the is presented is false, so we are passing false, it is somewhere off screen. So now I'm going to go ahead and run this. Once it is run, uh, once it is running, then I can go ahead and tap on the show alert. And you can see it's nothing going on. Well, the reason there's nothing going on is that right over here, we need to set is presented to be true, but we never did that. So let's go over here and set self dot is presented equals to true. All right, let's go ahead and give it a try, another try. Oh, beautiful. But now it doesn't hide. So you can see the cancel and the done, it's not really doing anything. It does come up, but it doesn't really do anything. Okay, so this means we have to do something in AZ Alert. You can see that in the done and in the cancel, uh, we are, well, leaving it completely blank. It's really not doing anything. So this means that we can go ahead and say is shown equals to false. And this one also, we can go ahead and say is shown equals to false. And since if shown is a binding property, whenever we change is shown, it is automatically going to be changed for is presented, which in turn will become false, and then it, the view will render again. So let's go ahead and run this again. Show alert, cancel, show alert, done. Show alert, looks really nice, right? So we can now easily see what is going on and we have created a very nice, beautiful alert. Now, one other thing that you can do with AZ Alert is that to provide some sort of a closures, meaning some sort of functions that can be called when it is when you press on the done and when you press on the cancel. So this means we can go ahead and create on done, which is simply a closure. And whenever you call on done, it is going to pass in a string which is the same string that you have entered into the text box. It's not going to return anything. And providing a body, it's kind of like this, like empty body for now. Using the same approach, we can also provide uh, on cancel. And on cancel is not really going to do anything. It's not really going to give you anything. And also we can initialize it kind of like this, empty closure, if you want to. So this means that whenever you say done, we can go ahead and call self dot on done and we do need to pass in something which is self dot text and when you call cancel we can simply say on cancel and we're not really going to pass anything now on to the person who is calling which is content view if the content view is interested in passing in on done and passing in the cancel then it, it can do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and say on done. And if I'm interested in that, I can do those things. And we'll get the text back. And now I can do something with this text. I can maybe add it to a collection. I can add it to a list, an array, things like that. But once I get the text, I can do whatever I want. So this will give you a little bit more idea of by exposing the on done and on cancel, you can get these closures or callbacks where you can take further action. So hope you like this. I think it's a really good way of creating uh, the alert uh, with the text field, which is not available by default. But now if I go ahead and click something over here and I type something over here, let's say hello world or something, and I say done, I can go ahead and print it out. So either I can print it out over here or I can print it out as soon as the person is actually typing. So let's go ahead and see that how we can do this. So what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to add another, let's say that we add another text over here. So that's the first way I'll show you that the text is actually changing. So text is simply displaying text, which is this state value. And keep in mind that we are sending this state down to the AZ alert. So it will eventually get changed when you type something in the text box. So I'm gonna say show alert, and I'm gonna say hello world. And there we go. You can actually see the hello world is being displayed. Now, if this is not what you wanted, but you wanted to get the text back, you can also get the same text back right over here and you can add it somewhere. Maybe you can add it to a list. So this is completely up to you. Whatever you want to do, you can definitely, uh, you can definitely do that. All right, so I'll, I can show it to you. It's pretty simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a particular list first or some sort of items. So you can see it's like five items. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a very basic list, nothing, nothing complicated, just a basic list that is going over those, those items, those five items. So if I go ahead and resume it right now, it simply says five items, nothing, nothing complicated, I, I hope. And finally, I can go ahead and whenever the person says on done, I can go ahead and append the text to the item. Since the item is a state, it's going to re-render it again, all right? So let's go ahead and run this, show alert, and I'm gonna say foo, done, and there we go. You can actually see the foo being inserted. I'm gonna say show alert, and I'm gonna say boo, and there we go. If you do want to clear out this text that we are typing over here, we can just add one more line right here to clear out the text, which is self.text equals to empty. And that will clear it out. So hope you like this approach of creating the custom SurfUI controls in SurfUI. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my Udemy course on SurfUI. It is 20 plus hours of SurfUI content and the best selling course on Udemy. You can see that we're gonna start with creating and combining views, then building list and navigation. It's even going to go into and explaining what exactly is MVVM design pattern. Next up is going to talk about how you can create a SIF UI app integrating with core data. And I have a huge section which covers SIF 2.0, meaning iOS 14 changes and animations. And then we're gonna learn about building a beautiful card interface using Surf UI. So check out the YouTube description for the link of this course and all of my other courses. And there's also a Patreon link. So if you just want to support every month, then you can use the Patreon link. I would greatly appreciate that. Thank you so much.